once lived a boy with a penchant for magic. His story is one that's both joyful and tragic. It started one night as he paced in his room when that strange... Bud called Chance came into full bloom. A party for dinner the boy's parents would host, and as guests would raise up their glasses to toast, a visiting daughter who went up to play would find herself altered in a most peculiar way. A novice warlock. The girl was no longer bright eyes and clean frock, but a slob frottering beast, an error most foul. And who could reverse this? A true friend. A pink pal. Twas chance yet again that led pink to the boy, in the form of a salesman. Strong pitch, dab of coin. The children were desperate and needed King's aid, but the risk would be great, and the cat was afraid. The boy had no choice. Coercion was needed. He cast a cruel spell that Pink's book be deleted. The frantic pink cat knew not what to do, said the warlock to the cat, helping us will help you. And so pink would begin to search across the world wide for the girl's needed cure, and a salve for his hide. I know what you're wondering, you're sharp, I can tell, how that amateur wizard proved to cast a true spell, without dragging the young hopeful's name through the mud. I confess to have helped him, yours truly. Strange blood. I had a terrible dream. Wanna be magicians? Slobbering wombats? Where am I? What happened? Pink Panther, that's me, drops out of the super spy business and becomes a traveling salesman. That much I remember. I guess this must be one of the houses I stumbled into to try to sell the Book of Knowledge. Maybe I had to use the bathroom. I hope I went. Ahem. Ahem. An expression of gratitude is customary, sir. An expression of gratitude? Why didn't you say so? Thank you. How's that for an expression, huh? A monetary expression is customary, sir. For my services. For your services? Are you saying no cold hard green, no fancy latrine? Exacto mundo, sir. What a racket. I think I'm starting to notice an interior design theme here. Is it a motif? I think it's a motif. Are you the florist? You're late. The champagne delivery? You're early. Wait a minute, I recognize you now. You're that lowly sales cat who came peddling books. Ms. Periwinkle, maybe he's here to bid on the Star's Bike Collection. Nonsense, Midge. You haven't a clue. He's a commoner. I can smell it on him. It's putrid. Did you say Star's Bite Collection? I suppose you'll need a tip. 
take this. Thank you for stopping by to inconvenience us. Farewell, adieu, bon voyage. Show yourself out. Come, ladies, there's still time to tour my shoe museum before supper. <laughs> That must be the Star's Bite Collection. I really shouldn't, but I'm just so darn curious. So let me get this straight. This guy is selling a bunch of rotten old famous people's teeth? Cool. Yes, preventative dentistry is where it's all going. I say, take the darn teeth out while they're still good and healthy. Saves you tons of money and safeguards your gums. Put those good teeth on the shelf for special occasions. And for everyday use, try Shino Bar. These are the teeth of the future, gentlemen. No flossing or brushing required. Mine here are the first set ever to be made entirely out of Shino Bar. Allow me to demonstrate. Shino Bar is a high gloss flame retardant material that smells mildly like peanuts and has no problem going through the dishwasher. Shino Bar bounces, it's stain resistant and virtually non sticking. Doesn't seem to belong to anyone in particular. What are you? I'm a pink panther. Are you a pet? Maybe my daughter wants you. I'm not for sale. I'll pay one quarter of a million. I'll need plenty of food and water. You can pick me up on your way out. I don't believe we've met. The name's Flip Loose Liver. I see you're without champagne. Yes, quite intentionally. Wouldn't want to wind up with a loose liver, Flip. You go ahead. Happy trials. Of going through other people's medicine cabinets, Emily Post writes, and I'm paraphrasing, unless you are a fictitious pink character appearing in a CD-ROM game, do not do it. Luckily, Smile supporter, support your smile. I can't do it with you listening. Uh, forget it. The boy! The horrible monster! I thought it was all a nightmare, but... You again! Have you changed your mind? Are you ready to talk turkey? If you don't help me transform Violet back into a little girl, then she's... Definitely missing her prom, that's for sure. <laughs> don't cry, Violet. The prom is overrated. I'm not 
crying because of the prom. I'm crying because I don't want to be a plain little girl. Well, you're not. You're a big hairy. I didn't want to be a wombat either. I wanted to be an immortal, magical ninja princess mermaid. And I wanted to be a traveling salesman, but then little Houdini here erased my book. I told you, if you help me transform Violet into an immortal, magical ninja princess mermaid, then I'll lift the curse off your book and you can go back to your dumb traveling sales job. If you can't reverse her spell, why should I believe you could reverse the spell you cast on my book? I can't do it alone. I need your help. The answers lie with strange blood. dark and enchanted woods, you know, behind my house, there lives a warlock named Strangeblood, who alone lives quiet as a mouse. He spins black magic and casts wicked spells, some even claim that the future he tells. The townspeople disowned him and cast him aside, but when he slips away to his lab I do ride. I pinch powder from potions and at his research steal looks. And every so often, I borrow his books. You stole all these things? I borrowed them. It's Strangeblood's books that got us into this mess. It's Strangeblood's books that can get us out. Why do you go into his lab, Nathan, if he caught you? He's evil, Violet. I must master his own sorcery so that one day I can destroy him and save Golden Moles from his villainous clutches. How do you know he's evil? Everybody says so. As Vincent Van Gogh said, I am not an adventurer by choice, but by fate. And so, I'm off to see Uncle Strangeblood now. Wish me luck. I never knew Van Gogh had an Uncle Strangeblood. What an eerie coincidence. If I can hear that, how come he can't? Who's there? Was that you, Wink? I'll be back in an hour, Spot. How bad could he be? He's got a pet named Spot. Every cold night at the stroke of just eight, he walks in the woods for one hour straight. I can be in and out in one hour, no problem. Here, Spot. Spot, are you here? Here, Spot. Spot, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. You're a... You're just a... Black spot. Black hole, actually, but being called hole wouldn't be very endearing. Wow, you're a real black hole. I've never met one of you before. No one has, except strange blood. That's the old man's spell reversal manual. It contains the magic ingredients needed to reverse a bad spell. That is exactly what I'm looking for. But, but every cold night at the stroke of just eight, you walk in the woods for one hour straight. What happened? It was unusually warm out this evening. Oh no! The spell reversal manual! That's alright, I can still read the pages. How do you change a wombat into an immortal, magical ninja princess mermaid? Let's see here. To make an immortal mermaid, you'll need to find me, the only thing living in the saltiest sea. To make a magic princess, you'll need a princely laugh. Specifically, the hugest one that has a chilly past. What about the ninja part? Doesn't say. Personally, I would improvise. Can't hurt. Good help. That's what you think. Where are we going now? Where are we going?
What happened? I found out the ingredients we need to transform Violet. To make an immortal mermaid, I need this. The only thing living in the saltiest sea and a princely laugh. Specifically, the hugest one that has a chilly past. Great! Where are they? I'm working on it. Hello. Are you using your whiskers? Uh, yes. Why? I am Golden Mall's top plastic surgeon, Dr. Aimeki Yunu. This is my wife, Himeki Yunu. She is constructed entirely out of excess body parts my patients leave behind. Everyone in Golden Mall's has contributed to her fabrication. I thought you might like her to wear your whiskers. Very exciting evening. More exciting than you know. I don't really fit in here. That's not such a bad thing. I've been trying to get into high society since the day I was born. But my name said it all. Midge Poor Penny. Pleasure to meet you, Miss Poor Penny. So, how did you wind up here anyway? Haven't you heard? I'm Midge Poor Penny. I'm the lotto winner. I'm a zillionaire. But money doesn't change everything. This crowd still doesn't accept me. That's why I want to purchase the whole entire Stars Bite collection. Then they'll know my taste is as good as theirs. Sounds like a prudent plan. Perhaps I should go check on the children. No, they're busy. I mean, fine. And that's when I said to my little fluoride face, let's throw a gala event. It will be a wonderful opportunity for me to inadvertently draw attention to myself. <laughs> Having a fun time, kitty? Ow! I'm shaking golden pipes. Good to meet you. Every time I see a new face, I can't help but greet you. Are you of any relation to Shoopy Golden Pipes? I'm his biggest fan. I have all his records. Uh, Shoopy is my stepdad. I'm Shaky here, his son. My record just came out, and I'm sure that I'll sell some. No doubt. No doubt. So, I guess that makes you the stepson of soul. Ha <laughs> ha, that's right. Say it two times. Stepson of soul, stepson of soul. Say it once more. I can't. I have stuff to do. Hello, I'm Saltina Cracker Barrel, heiress to the Saltina Cracker fortune. Therefore, I'm very rich. Never know when a black belt will come in handy. Pages. Yes, it belongs to no one. Hey, Yaz, it's milk pouch. It must have fallen off his neck. The milk tastes kind of funny, though. a chilly past. I know I need that crazy mammoth in my life, but I'm just not sure how to get it. Why so sad, clown? Why you think? Look at me. 
Clown without circus. Rebel without cause. Cookie nor milk. This is chicken soup, no noodles. You lost me. I couldn't perform in Moscow Circus anymore because... Smile wasn't big enough, they say. Nobody liked the sad fat clown, they say. Get rid of him, they say. How do you think the sad fat clown felt then? Sad and fat, I'm guessing? 100% right! I came to Siberia to freeze myself to death. What happened? I dressed too warmly. I've got something that I think will really help you. Oleg, Oleg Karskov. Mr. Karskov, this here is a newfangled item called a smile supporter. It could be of great help to a clown in your sad state. Am I smiling right now? Am I? Am I smiling right now? This feels really funny, but I think I am smiling right now! I'm in great pain, but oh, I'm happy! Truly happy! Smiling like real clown again! I can do anything real clown can do! Except walking. I'm glad to have been able to help. Let me know if I can ever repay you. I'll do anything except walk. I can't do that right now. You look like a fish out of water. This is my first time in Siberia. Funny, I don't remember asking. Well, now there's something I like to see. An elderly woman sitting in the freezing cold, hacking apart her disgusting yellow toenails. Warms the cockles of my heart. Watch your filthy mouth! Yazit! Yazit! Come home, Yazit! Come home! Eh, should have named him Snoopy. Named who, Snoopy? My missing reindeer, Yazit! Yazit! Quiet! Grandma Tonga, I can't hear the TV! Hello! I am trying to get a little shut eye here. I am in hibernation, yet I can't get to sleep. Do not disturb me, comprende? No moleste, senor! That is food supply hut. We built it nice and high so the bears would not get to it. Say, there must be plenty of reindeer around these parts. Why don't you just replace Yazit? Yazit is not just any reindeer, you imp. He was the chosen one. He got to sleep in the tent by the fire. He was never burdened with hard work. Say, Grandma, how do you catch a reindeer anyway? Practice! And I'm not your grandma! And, uh, how do you get to Carnegie Hall, Grandma? Salt! I thought so. So, if my hunch is right, and there is some sense to Grandma's drivel... It's not dribble! Then you need salt to catch a reindeer. She just got her punchlines wrong. Hey, Grandma, it echoes. Dead end, 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 dead end. Sorry, contractually, I should not have done that. Are you going to help me or not? I have always relied on the kindness of strangers. Maybe a little too much. No offense, but you don't really seem to be pursuing this whole find Yazid thing wholeheartedly. I mean, all you're doing is sitting out here, calling his name, and carving up those everlasting toenails. 
The Evenki are excellent carvers. Still, if you really want to find Yazit, it's probably gonna require a little exertion. Exertion? I'm over 100 years old. Give me a break and show some respect. Stand up straight and go back to school. Yazit! Come home, Yazit! You going to help me or not? These toenails look strangely aerodynamic. That's quite a swing you've got. Well, I only wanted to try to tune in my favorite show, Blarney. It's about a big page-colored walrus that sings little rhymes to children, and it all seems fun and innocent at first, but then he slowly brainwashes them to act aggressively and beg their parents for sugared foods. I can't miss it! I want candy! It must be my satellite dish out back. I made it myself. Would you mind fooling with it? Oh. There was a time in my life when I would have gotten in trouble for that. Hmm? Nothing like a little warm milk. Going back out there to help me. Aw, thanks. Oh! I can see Blarney's feet! Try moving around with it a bit. Mm -hmm. Hey! What happened? A freshly fallen mound. Hey, look! Snow Panther! I always wanted a twin brother. I'll call him Nip. frozen in one position long enough for that kid to get her dose of Blarney? Thank you, Pink Panther. I am with Blarney. He is speaking to me clearly now. I love you, Blarney. with Jane Fondue. Sounds excellent. Yazit, 
come with me. Sorry, it's not reindeer hunting season. What oopsie? I kind of crushed your glasses. I'm sorry. Ugh, stay away from my things. You destructive talking sunburned cat. Leave me in peace. This salt could help me spice up my life. Who poked me? What do you want? Hey. What are you doing over there? I don't belong here. I'm trying to get back to the Great Rift Valley. But I thought the Dead Sea Lake was in the Great Rift Valley. Sure, lots of things are. The Great Rift Valley is 3,000 miles long. It spans from East Africa through Southwest Asia. I happen to be from Kenya, not exactly next door. How'd you get so far away from home? Part of an effort to repopulate the Middle East with wildlife that once thrived here. I'm not wild about the situation. As an ostrich, I can't fly and I never learned how to swim. If it wasn't for this giant salt lake, I could probably walk home. But that's my only option. It's so darn dark, I can't see anything. I'm not moving. I think it was English poet John Milton that said, To be blind is not miserable. Not to be able to bear blindness, that is miserable. Sadly, I am one of those who cannot bear it. Turn on the lights! Those are the coolest tweezers ever! I'm going to borrow them because I have the strangest feeling that they will come in very handy very soon. Who poked me? What do you want? Who poked me? What do you want? Hi! Hey! You're alive! So are you! But this is the Dead Sea. Supposedly, there is nothing living in it. Get with it. About 60 years ago, Dr. Eliezer Volcani proved that to be false. First, living microbes were found, then single-cell algae, and now the Israeli research team found me, a form of fungus entirely new to science. But how does anything live in such salty water? Never underestimate the power of a microscopic fungus, my friend. Slippery little fungus. Could this little fungus be the only living thing in the saltiest sea? Hmm. You want I should have my property destroyed by you? You already crushed my designer sunglasses. Leave my fine things alone. Okay, hand it over. Hand what over? My postule paper. I need that thing for squeezing the slime out of my papular lesions. Seen such unbridled love of a condiment. Should I tell him? Nah, why spoil it?
salt lick? Wow, that was disgusting. That is biggest salt lick I have ever seen in my hundred years on Earth. Where in the world is this from, Carmen? Israel, and I am so tired of being compared to that woman. The name's Pink. This is going to do it! This is going to lure Yazid back! Yazid, I knew you'd come back! Ah, I'm glad to see everything worked out all right. I'll just put Yasit down for his nap. <laughs> Pretty sprightly for a 100-year-old gal. What is this thing? Meteorite chunk, presumably. I landed here on June 30th in 1908. Didn't mean to, but I did. See, I was just streaking across the sky, fiery as can be, when the comet or asteroid or whatever the heck I was traveling with exploded and landed me here. Took out 1,200 square miles of forest that June day. Oh, I didn't mean to, but I did. Caused some damage to the Earth's ozone layer, too. I didn't mean to. But you did. Yup. Maybe you can make it up to us by proving to be a really useful inventory item in this game. Aw, uh, it's the least I can do. That was quite a quake. Nothing like a little rat rumbler to get you back on your toes. Toes? Toes? Rat rumbler? Haven't you ever heard all the Vinky folklore? We believe that it is giant rats living underground that cause the earthquakes. Freezer brain. The rats exist. Believe me. Oh. See now, I had heard this nonsense about earthquakes being caused by the rupture and rebounding of rocks in the Earth's plates. But this whole giant rat theory makes a lot more sense. When you stumble upon such a giant rat, I will try to refrain from saying, I told you so. Thanks in advance. to be a pretty handy toe. Course. Only rodents pass this point, Bobby. But I'm a huge fan of the rodent. Then are! Suppose you wouldn't mind answering a few questions, matey. If it's true your friend not for, then this answer you're sure to know. Who was the true carrier of the Black Death Plague? <laughs> Let's try again. If to rats you are true blue, which one of these things can a rat just not do? Sadly enough, this one we can't do! Us rats live one year, then... it! We're through! Chinese astrology holds the rat deer. If your year of the rat, which is your birth year? That's right, my friend. In fact, they all are. Those born in the year of the rat will go far. Arg! I guess you're okay. Let him in, Ron. Welcome to the rat house.
looks like you're running some kind of a frat house down here. Get it? Frat? Oh, I get it. Oh, that's funny. Do you get it? I get it. I'm just not amused. Somebody's been working out. Negative. Well, then how'd you get so big? All of you. You're the hugest rats I've ever seen. Ain't you heard? The Sapiens used to test their nukes underground here with no regard for the subterranean dwellers. Now look! Ferocious fighters, those Sapiens. The very best, or the very worst, depending on how you look at it. I think it was Lord Lewis Mountbatten that said, if the Third World War is fought with nuclear weapons, the Fourth will be fought with bows and arrows. The tremor you felt was caused by our king aerobicizing, which reminds me, I'm hungry. Why do you keep wiping that bar? It must be clean by now. Come on, cheese for brains. Solve a riddle, win a sandwich. It's not as hard as it looks. I'd like to play. You? Okay, I got a good one for you. What saves human lives, but is not man's friend? Been around for all time and will thrive till the end. It makes farmers cry, yet this pest cannot fly. A gorgeous coat I must concur, though never killed for its fur. Here's one thing I bet you didn't know about rats. We make a sensational rat waste sandwich. Don't sniff for food, we're arm sniffing for food. You hear me? I entirely disagree. The rat's an imbecile. Self-serving, pompous, always working out, making the whole earth shake. I find it very annoying.
go, Seesaw. Oh, ludicrous game. I have no interest in playing. Stop at once. Give me ten more and we'll call it a day. Ten more what? Squad thrusts! <laughs> I just finished my workout a little while ago. You might have felt it up at the Cyphus. I think we did. It felt like an earthquake. Yes, well, I work out very hard. No doubt. Is there any way you could cause an even bigger earthquake? I'm asking for a reason. See, I... There's only one way, and it would never happen, not in a jillion years. I've been trying to get my fellas on the health kick for ten months now, and it's no use. They don't realize they're killing themselves out there. Have you ever seen such a revolting display of hedonism? The rat only lives for one year, you know. Well, Mother Nature is a complex gentlewoman. There must be some reason. Sure there's a reason. We got joked! I have in my mind's library an old Indian proverb that may be of some small comfort. It is better to sit down than to stand. It is better to lie down than to sit. But death is best of all. I relate more to the severely troubled Woody Allen who said, I don't want to achieve immortality through my work. I want to achieve it through not dying. Point taken. So you think the whole working out thing is going to prolong your life expectancy? I know it will. You help me get the rats active and healthy, and you'll get your earthquake. I guarantee it. <laughs> Tapes? I've got a projector. This sounds good. This is very good. Thanks for the quake, King. This is very good. And you don't stop. I love the way we do the hip hop. And one, and two, and one, two, three, four. How am I gonna get him out of here?
It's so darn dark. I can't see anything. I'm not moving. Hey! Hey, it looks like a page from my book of knowledge! Shh! I didn't say anything. I'm trying to reach something very small lodged in this cave's wall. What is it? I don't know. Then why do you want it? Because I want to be an archaeologist someday. This could be my first great find. What makes you think so? It was just east of here that the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, in Jordan. Oh, darn, I can't reach. Maybe these will help. Thanks! I don't know how to use that thing. Hey, Eli, you'll hurt your eyes out there. Try wearing these. Ah, you are a menace to the sea. But now you do right by me. Thank you for the sunglasses. It's the least you can do. Yes! Yes! I got it! What is it? I don't know! Eli's Pustule Popper. Ow! It's too slippery. Can't get a good grip on it. But I need it for... Ah, uh, never mind. What Eli's pustules don't know won't hurt him. Cutting too much sun, I'm delirious. Thanks for getting rid of that water. Now I can walk home. Allow me to express my gratitude. <laughs> that one's all yours, bub. Wow, that thing is huge. Yeah, it weighs about three pounds.
This could cause an explosive reaction. Kids, please don't try this at home. We are going to be taking a little trip, so I guess it's a good thing you brought your trunk. Hello! Hate to do my own flute, but I am ex-circus performer who happens to owe you a favor. I'd be glad to help. Thanks, Oleg. You are a lifesaver. <laughs> Very impressive. I come bearing ingredients. Great! Where are they? What exactly is that thing? To make a magic princess, you'll need a princely laugh. Specifically, the hugest one that has a chilly past. And? The hugest one? A mammoth? A chilly past? I found him frozen in a block of ice in Siberia. What about the princely laugh? I'm hoping. You know any good jokes? What did the Pink Panther say when he stepped on an ant? Nathan, maybe you shouldn't. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. Dead ant. <laughs> it was funny when it first came out. I can't believe you two. I'm trapped in a nasty wombat body, and the only thing the two of you can think to do is tell dumb Pink Panther jokes. Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> Did that sound princely? I think it was princely. Now we're getting somewhere. Is that everything? What else do we need? <laughs> I'm betting this black belt will arm our little princess to be with the ability to injure grown men. Give it a try. Is that everything? What else do we need? You still need to find the only thing living in the saltiest sea. And the Dead Sea is the saltiest sea. To make an immortal mermaid, I needed to find the only thing living in the saltiest sea. Oh my gosh. Squidgy school back. Princess Bacoy, not skinny, not fat. Mermaid, no living. Wombat, retractor. Skivvy, bow, biscuit, bar. Magic, half, faster. Oh my gosh, you're. you're. starving, famished. I've the appetite of an overgrown puma. 
delectable aperitif. No! <laughs> oh, good. She's napping. Napping? Napping? Are you nuts? She just ate my cursed poison apple. It's supposed to be deadly. I don't know what's going to happen to her now. Oh, this isn't my day. This is not my day. Do you hear me? Look on the bright side. There's always... Uh, you're pretty much right. This isn't your day. What are we going to do now? Oh, come on. Isn't poison sleeping princess pretty much one of the standards? I mean, any magician worth his own salt must know how to undo this one. Of course I know how to undo this one. I never said I didn't know how to undo this one. This one, incidentally, is uh, no problem at all. Well, that's a huge relief, Nato. So go on, fix her up. And uh, unjinx the rest of my book of knowledge while you're at it. Yes, uh, I can undo the spell. However, I'm afraid I can't do that just yet. You see, I still need the magic ingredients necessary to rouse the slumbering princess. Immortal Magical Ninja Princess Mermaid. I see, and what ingredients might those be? A very good question, with a very simple answer. Well, let's have it. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, to rouse a poisoned princess, there's two main things you'll need. The carrier of the human soul and a redhead's woeful plea. The carrier of the human soul and a redhead's woeful plea? Oh, brother. Tut tut, Pink Panther. The girl's life hangs in the balance. Is your voice changing? I guess puberty is coming earlier these days. Glad I could be here to share. I talk stupid talk. I eat disgusting bird. When, oh when, will I get to see precious teeth? I I'm a vegetarian. I'll just drink the water. Very well, but it's beef water, dear. It was just a joke, Midge. Tell her. The very wealthy do that, Mrs. Izumi. You'll catch on. Now, I'm a somewhat adventurous eater. Of most things, I'll try a smidgen. But mark my words, good people. I will not eat this soul pigeon. I'm watching my girlish figure. The pigeon is divine. Whoever said the pigeon was a worthless bird never tried eating it in an Alfredo Vindolo sauce. Now, Flip, you won't get your pigeon until you finish your liver. Yes, you're the only one still on appetizers, Flip. Step it up a bit. I'm just savoring every last bite. I'd sooner drink llama bean juice than eat some poor thing's liver. It's barbaric. Someday I'll learn to enjoy the vile delicacies upon which the financially superior feast. I'm watching her girlish figure. All the good things from Greece rolled into a salad. I hand-baked these desserts myself three months in advance. They may be a little hard by now, but not to worry. If you chip a tooth, I know a sensational dentist. <laughs> 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 A cookie a day keeps the doctor away.
I just thought I'd drop in. Are you the god of wind? No. Then we're not interested. I'm praying for wind to help us sail, or food to help feed us, or else maybe dancing priests to help distract us. That's an odd request. Didn't you meet any bises ashore? Their presence is important at many events. To ensure fertility, they dance themselves into delirium, often inflicting injury to show how entranced they are. Funny, where I'm from, to ensure fertility, we just use manure. Uh, go like this. You've got a boogies. You aren't by any chance the carriers of the human soul. Nope. We're the boogies. The fierce boogies. Gypsy sea traders and navigators of even the most ferocious monsoon. Needless to say, it takes a little wind to make a good monsoon. Boogies, huh? When I was little, I used to hear stories about boogies. Boogie men. That's us. But the boogie men were supposed to be horrible. Why would that be based on you? Boogies. May I call you Boogies? Is that politically correct? Our forefathers were ferocious pirates who looted goods and cargo, doing away with anyone who stood in their way. Oh, well, that makes sense then. Several months ago, a neighboring Boogies tribe much like this one attacked a boat for goods, killed everyone aboard. That wasn't very nice of the neighboring Boogies tribe. Yes, well, in retrospect, they're sorry. Hi, I'm Abandoned Sea Snake. I have enough venom in my body to knock out 70 grown men. I'm the most poisonous snake in the world. Ha ha ha! <clears throat> Epitaph for a dying shark. Perhaps my sorrow would not be as great if my entire sharkhood were on man's dinner plate. But to wound a great shark, not for meat, not for skins, but for only an item as small as his fins. It dishonors the code which the food chain hath writ. If only I had strength, sure, I'd pitch a huge fit. How tragic. Great Shark, I promise I'll get your fins back for you, or my name isn't Pink Panther. Much obliged, Pink Panther. <coughs> Never know when a barnacle will come in handy. Say, hey, you boogies, I think there's enough here for everyone. Lucky for you, barnacles would make a great soup when you haven't eaten. <coughs> Delicious! Best barnacles I ever tasted! Never know when a burlap sack will come in handy. Mm? Now that the soup is ready and the barnacles are nice and warm, maybe they won't notice if I pocket some shark fins. Delicious! There's an old Irish proverb that says, There's hope from the sea, but none from the grave. Hope this venomous snake won't chomp a pink knave. Just as you'd promised, I am an able shark again free to devour sea creatures whole and play my vital role in the food chain. It's my job, you know. Perhaps I'll become a vegan. 
You know, one of those people who won't eat dairy. Or maybe you can help me now. I'm stuck on that sailboat and there's no wind. Perhaps you could give me a lift? I'm a changed fish with a big heart. I'll be glad to help you. Yikes! That moray eel looks hungry. Those sharp teeth are frightening. Maybe I should offer him a delicious snack food so he won't snack on me. What you got? Uh, baked goods? Sounds scrump diddly -icious. Hey, I lost a tooth! Sorry, Charlie. Do you know how expensive dental work is down here underwater? from my book of knowledge. You better get out of here. Save yourself, you hear me? Unless you want to get eaten by one of those disgusting dragons. I hate dragons. The sign says all the dragons are that way. Only the ones who are looking for a handout from the tourists. The dragons roam free all over this island. Uh, it's a tourist trap. <laughs> Oh no, it's over. Chitons for me. You'll never get this ham sandwich. A little pig, a little pig. Let me live. Not by the toxic saliva on my flickering yellow tongue.
Linda. Well, what are you doing? I'm getting ready to have a ham sandwich, you fool. Now get lost. You know, the tourists are giving out dead goats over there. Just because they want to watch us feed. Sure is a lot easier than chasing around some nervous ham sandwich. I am not like you domesticated sellouts. I am a fierce female dragon capable of laying 30 eggs in one sitting. <laughs> I enjoy the hunt of my prey, and in case you forgot, Komodo dragons are also cannibals. Now scram before I devour you. <laughs> now, where was I? Excuse me, Linda, the Komodo dragon. Oh, so you're a tourist. How did you know? Because the locals call Komodo dragons Aura. Okay, Aura then. I was just wondering, is there any way I can save that little pig? <laughs> I wish I had something that would scare her away. I'm afraid of spiders and snakes, and of course, giant rats, and the dark, and boogeyman, and, uh, did I mention snakes? I am really scared of snakes. <laughs> Was it something I said? That was a close call. Thanks a lot. Here, allow me to say thanks. Hmm? What's this? What do you think? It's the coveted ham sandwich. Wow. Thanks a lot. Hey, it's no skin off my back. I thought it was... Never mind. <laughs> Some view. The jungles of Borneo! I'm an orangutan, an anthropoid. The orangutan is an endangered species. There are only 5,000 of us left living in the wild. Orangutan means man of the jungle. I don't suppose you're the... never mind. Hi, I'm a tiny tarsier. I'm a nocturnal prosimian with big old eyes that I can't move around. But not to worry, I can swivel my head 180 degrees so I see everything that's coming or going. Are you the carrier of the human soul? No, I'm a tiny tarsier. Are you listening or what? When you gotta go, you gotta go. I wonder what this means. Oh, hello. You found our message stick. Let me teach you how to read it. These curls indicate that there are four of us traveling. These shapes say that we've been traveling for two moons, two months. Any dyad, as they call us, knows how to read this. You sure do have a lot of body art. It is a diet tradition to mark every important event with a tattoo. My mom would freak. I wasn't even allowed to get my ear pierced. You wouldn't be the carrier of the human soul by any chance? Do I look like a hornbill to you? My people believe that it is the legendary hornbill that is the carrier of the human soul. The most sacred of birds. 
Something must have happened to the husband. He's not been back to the tree. We have been pushing food to them through the crack when they let us, but the hornbill must break open the nest for itself from the inside. They've not seen his beak pushing through the hole, so they are afraid to come out. I am too weak to walk. I am starving. It has been days since I've eaten. Would you be interested in a ham? I think there are birds sealed in that tree. He seals up the nest with clay, leaving an opening the exact dimensions of our hornbill beak. This is another page from my book of knowledge. Just a few moments, we'll climb into the basket and turn the burners on high. We will then slowly drift into the sky where we will begin our journey over the Masai Mara National Reserve toward Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is the world's second largest freshwater lake. It is second only to Lake Superior, which, needless to say, is superior. Oh, foo! We lost the lever that turns a burner on. I need something to replace it. No, no, this is not good news, folks. Since you're not in the basket, could you do something to replace the handle? Oh no, it looks like the beak of a bird. How sad. I am the lion, the king of beasts. Us lions travel in prides with sometimes as many as 37 lions. The females never leave the pride. They're much smaller and they hunt in groups. In general, they are far less independent than males. Leo, dinner, now. Coming, dear heart. I'm a zebra. I'm an herbivore. I eat plants. But that doesn't stop the carnivorous animals from trying to eat me. Luckily, my stripes confuse predators when they're running after me. A giving tree. The elephant is the largest living land mammal. Did you know that? Did you? We're a highly intelligent sort, which has gotten us nowhere, really. Only led to our being widely used in circuses. Sadly, we are an endangered species. Some humans are so fond of our ivory tusks that they feel the need to hunt and kill us for them. It's illegal, but poachers still continue to do it. Quirky creatures, those humans. I'm a rhinoceros, a strict vegetarian, believe it or not. Did you know three out of the five species of rhinos are now nearing extinction? Humans like to hunt us for our horns, which they believe have all sorts of magical powers. You can imagine how irritating we find this. The giraffe is the tallest animal in the world, sometimes growing to 18 feet. With a neck this long, you must be wondering about my tongue. <laughs> it's a foot and a half long, dearie. Read it and weep. 
Welcome to the Maasai Mara National Reserve, straddling Kenya and Tanzania. Here you can witness the annual wildebeest migration. Every year, about a million of us storm into the reserve here during the dry season. Many of us will become food for the lions and hyenas, but such is life. Ah, I'm a hyena! Not the most likable fella you're gonna meet out here! <laughs> I'll eat anything dead, <laughs> alive, <laughs> unattended babies, what have you! <laughs> Hi there! I'm a cheetah! An endangered species, as it were. Cheetahs are the fastest living land animal on the planet! I can run about 68 miles an hour without breaking a sweat! See ya! <laughs> Pink Panther? Is that you? I don't believe it! Look at this guy! Hey, fellas, come meet my cousin! Looking good, looking good. I don't believe it! Big Hollywood star! Out here in the middle of the jungle! <laughs> Look at you, all pink! Still got your roar? Eh? Oh, I don't know. It's been a while. I bet you don't have much use for it on your fancy TV show or your fancy pants interactive CD-ROM games. I love your work, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Come on! For all time's sake, get primeval for us, eh? Well, maybe just one little one. He still got it! <laughs> Maybe if I wiggle this hornbill at them, they'll think it's the husband bird and come out. Amazing! Spiritual! We would like very much to commemorate this event with a tattoo. I have the roots needed to make the stain. Now we just need something sharp to hook to a stick. An eel's tooth! Perfect! Here, take this as a token of our appreciation. Thanks. We must continue our wandering. Here, Hornbill. Here, little carrier of the human soul. I'm not gonna hurt ya. Try nesting in here, why don't ya? Swell job, friend. Here, take this for your troubles. Cheers. Oh, I'm only a cartoon character, I don't.
Say flip. I'll trade you a bottle of this imported bubbly for your liver. Liver? You want my liver? Not your liver. Your loose liver. Your spare. Oh, right. You've got a deal. Are you from the missionary? Enough is enough! All the worms that if the Maasai did not assimilate, they would surely become extinct! The Maasai are highly adaptable, just not to your ways. When need be, we stop herding to hunt. When need be, we stop hunting to plant. We support our communities and help each crew emutai. Emutai? Emutai means the time of disasters. And my people have seen many, but none like the period in the 19th century, where drought, famine, and smallpox plagued our people. Rinderpest and bovine pleru pneumonia devastated our cattle. The Maasai survived despite it all and continue to thrive today. So long as we have our cattle, all must be well. How is it that the Maasai have such a serious collection of cattle? It seems like every Maasai herds cattle. How did that come to be? Let them tell you! Sing it, guys! The first Maasai was a man they called Masinta. And God spoke unto Masinta. And said he'd send him down some cows. Send him some cows. God told Masinta, build a cattle enclosure. That's the thing we call a crowd. And before you know it, God told Masinta, there'll be cattle on the ground. Was a man they called Masinta, and God spoke unto Masinta, and said he'd send him down some cows. Send him some cows. Now Masinta thanked God in advance and asked him what in return he'd seek, and God told Masinta. So warned Masinta of one other thing. He said, Don't make a sound or a peek. Cattle streamed down right from the sky. It was the strangest thing to see. A nearby hunter let loose a big cry. Masinta thought, I hope God don't think that was me. Now, the myth is not the only reason Maasai herd cattle. It makes sense ecologically, too. For 
are moving around seeking water and fresh food keeps nomad people healthy too. I am a man today, fully initiated into manhood. That is why my head is shaved and dipped in red ochre. Soon I will be able to marry. Congratulations in advance. Today should be a joyful day, but my cattle are thirsty and I must lead them to water. They are very hungry and I must lead them to pasture. But my wife has just had a baby, and that should be celebrated with blood and meat. But I cannot inflict such needs on my weakened cattle. Surely one of my neighbors would donate a bull to slaughter. But everyone is off in more fertile lands. Why not serve up a goat or a sheep? Those animals are eaten every day. On the day of the precious birth, a sacred cattle should be eaten, or even a part of a sacred cattle. Maybe you could donate something. Maybe I can find something. Is this liver from a steer? Thank you. Now I can celebrate my child's birth without weakening my cattle. Soon we will leave to better pastures. Hey, honey, the pink panther brought us a big hunk of liver. He is so thoughtful. Thank you again. I saw what a nice thing you did. So why do you look so sad? A very young girl has fallen ill. She can't wake up. This is a terrible tragedy. Children are the bright moon. May I suggest a chant? Olapa, Oibor, Inkera. What does it mean? Children are the bright moon. Oh. Perhaps if you plead these words to the red god, he will show mercy. You see, there are two gods, the black god and the red god. The red god is malicious, and the black god is good. The black god lives close to man, and the red god lives above him. You're a redhead in a sense. You just taught me a plea, sort of. What was it again? Well, it's not really a plea. It's more of an old Maasai proverb. Trust me, by the time I get done with it, it'll be a plea. What was it? Olapa Oibor Inkera. Olapa Oibor Inkera. Olapa Oibor Inkera. Thanks, you've helped more than you know. I got that woeful chant from a redhead, literally. Good. All you need now is the carrier of the human soul, whatever that means. <laughs> a feather from the soul carrier, for good measure. Hola. Well, keep chanting, and you keep dancing. Why isn't this working? Don't you have to say some magic spell or something? Squally sicky some girls, belly wickled others, casty magic boopsy bop, open up them shutters. 
it, it's hard to explain. All the while, I felt like there was some mysterious and magical force helping me along. I'm on my own, and I can't make the magic happen. You've got to keep trying, Nathan, for Violet's sake. I can't. I'm no good. <laughs> I don't think the potion's potency is perfect, partner. I might need some vegetables to make this a complete, well-balanced spell. I don't think the potion's potency is perfect, partner. I might need some vegetables to make this a complete, well-balanced spell. You handsome devil! Looks like Mom's cooking. Yuck. Hey, Violet. Enjoy your nap? I can explain everything. Explain what, dear heart? Didn't she... don't you... Didn't she... don't you what, kitten? Never mind. As you were. And now, the moment you have all been waiting for. Without any further ado, may I present... The Star's Bite Collection. I want to buy the whole thing. How much? That's not fair. He can't buy the whole thing. Some of us want to purchase individual teeth. Too bad. I have a lot of money, and I want them all. Ladies and gentlemen, let's keep our wits about us. I'm certain we can reach an arrangement that benefits me exclusively. My, she's ruined the ambiance. Violet? Is that you? <laughs> we don't usually allow her to belch, or levitate above the room, or get possessed as she seems to be. What in the world is that thing? And how much do you want for it? I don't think it's for sale, is it, darling? Sure it is, Muffin. Sure it is. That thing is your daughter, Mr. Izumi. Is she having an asthma attack? This is the strangest party I have ever been to. Word to your mother. Can I have your attention, please? I am the evil spirit of Echidna. I now possess Violet. Hi, Echidna. 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 Hi. Now, I don't want to be here any more than you want me to be here. Apparently, someone was tampering with the mysterious forces of the unknown, and the next thing I know, I'm trapped in the body of an overweight toddler. Not overweight. Just big bone. Whatever. Now, in order to exorcise my spirit, you'll need to contact the most powerful man in the universe. But how are we going to get Steven Spielberger on such short notice? Who says it's Spielberger? I think it's Pat Swoon. That man is unstoppable. I think she means Zeus. Zeus? Echidna was a dreaded monster from Greek mythology, with the upper body of a woman and lower body of a gruesome serpent. Since, as you just proved, power is subjective and our subject to the spirit of a mythical creature from fabled Greece, it stands to reason that from Echidna's point of view, Zeus is the most powerful man in the universe, Zeus being the king of all gods. <laughs> But 
I could be wrong. Then I have to go back to that fabled time of Mount Olympus, when Greek gods did max and relax on the highest mountain in Greece. Ahem. <coughs> Ahem. I suppose I'll be needing this. I suppose I'll be needing this too. Never can tell when you'll need to say cheese. missing page. So, he pulls his chariot right out without looking and he cuts me off in the middle of traffic. I'm the god of wine in altered states and I'm telling you, if he wasn't... Sorry, Zeus, but I speak the truth. I'd like to have a word with Zeus. How do I reach him? You don't reach him, he reaches you. That's the way it goes when you're the king of the gods. I'd like to have a word with Zeus. You don't reach... That's Pegasus, the winged horse. My mother left as I arrived. She would only be missed by me. With a pair of snakes and a stony gaze Medusa, you finally free My father blessed with sons and daughters And of course, stormy sea And it took me years to understand There were never any others like me when horses fly, when dreamers sigh, when wells run dry, I can't help try. Poseidon wonders why Medusa says goodbye. Who wants to have a try? And ride a horse that flies Athena captured Pegasus Or was the one and only horse with wings Men who would be heroes Would use me to accomplish great things And be careful Somehow still From 
tell you the family feud is just getting started. Between my temperamental dad Zeus and my vengeful uncle Poseidon and my stubborn half-sister Athena, by the time this family spat is worked out, there will be nothing left of Mount Olympus. Hi, I'm Aphrodite, goddess of love. Well, look who washed up. How's it going, Poseidon? Is there any news on Echidna? Not since Zeus swallowed Athena again! It is for the best. That ornery woman will bring trouble to all. Maybe I'm just being dense, but if Athena is responsible for Echidna's disappearance, how is she going to be able to help you from the pit of Zeus's stomach? Silence! Did you say Echidna? Yes, Echidna is my granddaughter. She has the head of a beautiful nymph, but the body of a serpent. Zeus spared her and her children's lives as challenges to future heroes. She is missing. Do you have any information on her? Uh, let's suppose that someone accidentally cast a spell that made her disappear. It would be just like Athena to do something like that. How could we reverse it? I suppose only Athena herself would know the answer. So, if I ask her nicely... <laughs> <laughs> Silence! Bad Poseidon, he's always storming off. He and Athena have been quarreling for years. He's too stubborn to ask her nicely for help. Well, I'm not. If I could just speak to Athena, I'm sure I could convince her. Good luck. As you heard before, Zeus swallowed her whole. Now she's stuck in his head. There must be some way I can attract Zeus's attention. I may be in hot water with Poseidon. This trident could come in handy. Hmm? I'd like to have a word with Zeus. How do I reach him? Oh no, don't look to me for help. I steer clear of Zeus whenever possible. I'd like to have a word with Zeus. How do I reach him? Don't look at me. I've been trying to get my dad's attention for years. That smells divine. Do you have any idea how much easier that wonderful fragrance would make my job? Spray it on me, please. I'll let you have the whole bottle if you help me attract Zeus. You spray that on me, and Zeus will be here before you can say... Divinity? Whatever. Oh, Zeus. Something smells divine. 
the purest fume I ever did with. That's funny. For as good as it smells, the bottle said it's just water that came from a toilet. I don't have time for your games, Aphrodite. I've got a splitting headache over here. Maybe you ate something that didn't agree with you. Enough of the funny business, Dionysus. You're on my last nerve over here. Who are you? I am the god of headaches, here to help you with your headache. Get out of here. Are you serious? You can do that? Absolutely. I would have thought you'd learned your lesson, Daddy. Thank you, Pink God of Headaches. Not a problem. Wrong. She is a problem. She has done some sort of trickery with her cousin Echidna. I told you, I didn't do anything with that... that... half-woman, half-serpent beast. Then who is responsible for the disappearance? Which of you dare dabble in the field of fire and found yourself burned a fiery shade of pink? Was it you, God of Headaches? It was all a terrible mishap. You see, there was this cauldron and a little boy in trouble, and a big hairy girl and some leftover Greek salad, and the next thing I knew, Echidna was stuck in Violet, and Violet is... who knows where. You are responsible for the disappearance of Echidna? You, God of Headaches? This is not good. Your fate will be decided by the completion of two really difficult, nearly impossible tasks. You must succeed in both to win your life. But, but... There are no buts on Mount Olympus. Doesn't that make sitting uncomfortable? Let the challenge begin. Uh, hold on, don't I get someone to help me train for this event? I suppose. Who is this? Apollo. Who else? How you doing? Uh, been better. Uh, we gotta get you into shape. Let us begin. The first task will be similar to a task my son Perseus was victorious in. You must slay the two remaining Gorgons. Perseus beheaded Medusa with the aid of Athena and Hermes. Now you must put the remaining two Gorgons out of commission, yet spill no blood. Capiche? But beware, for their gaze alone can turn you to stone. Bring proof of your victory, but do not slay them. Uh, how do I get there? Why don't you take Pegasus, the winged horse? It sprang forth from Medusa when her head was cut off by Perseus. I'm sure he remembers the way to the Gorgons. No sweat, I'll be back in a flash. Meanwhile, don't get your sheets in a bunch. Thanks for the ride, Pegasus. The I am Steno. The I am Uriel. We, we are, are the, the remaining, remaining Gorgons. Turn around, Turn around so, so we, we can, can see, see ya. Must not look at snakeheads. Who calls on the dreaded Gorgons? Uh, it is I, Pink, God of Headaches. I have no headache. We'll see about that. Goodness gracious! Why, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my entire nearly immortal existence! Must not look at snakeheads! What is that? A UFO? I never did hope to see such a mysterious phenomenon! Must not look at snakeheads! Goodness gracious! Why, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my entire nearly immortal existence! Must not look at snakeheads! I wonder what that is! 
Oh, it's so interesting. Oh, God of Headaches, can you uh, look over here and tell me if you know what this is? Must not look at snake heads. <laughs> is that a supermodel over there? Sunbathing? Ooga. Must not look at snake heads. Don't look. It's a mirror. We could never fall for such wicked trickery. He has a mirror. Careful, don't look, or we'll turn ourselves into stone. Who ordered the Greek salad? Food, glorious food. Do you know what it's like living in this swamp? We can't even get a pizza delivered. That's what you get for being greedy. Let that be a lesson to all you kids out there. Ahem, excuse me, uh, miss, I believe you have a little something stuck in your teeth. You might want to, uh... Why don't you take a picture? It lasts longer. Say, headache. Headache. Now this is called a photograph. Say it with me. Photograph. It captures the image of... Let me see that thing. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's amazing, isn't it? So lifelike and... Well, let's see how you fare in the brains competition. I hope you've been brushing up on your Greek mythology. In this corner, weighing in at approximately 343 pounds, about half of which is water retention, is the mighty and vengeful Poseidon, god of the sea! In this corner, weighing in at... About 98 pounds. About 98 pounds is the pink, swim or sink, god of headaches! Thanks for your support. Answer the questions posed, or die. Thanks, Dee. I'll take answer the question posed for a hundred. When Athena got word that Medusa I kissed in a temple dedicated to she, she turned Medusa's hair into frightful wicked scare by transforming her locks into these. So you're lucky this time, but I'll quickly remind. Answer four out of five, or you won't get out alive. Bring it on! It's you, baby! It's all you! When Athens was looking to choose its patron, the choice was Poseidon or me. So, gifts we did make, and the tie would soon break. Which gift was it that came from me? Right. Now, which gift was it that came from he? Though your answer was good, you're not yet out of these woods. You must answer one more to walk free out that door. As you may have well noted, many gods here have doted. And if wed still consorts were present, who fathered all these? The answer's a breeze. This son of Kronos fought in with a vengeance. Who fathered Hermes, Ares, Apollo, and me? Perseus, Dionysus, and the great Heracles. Right again! 
You fared quite well. I must admit you have exceeded my expectations. Take me to my granddaughter and all is forgot. I would be happy to. We'll take my chariot. Hello, everyone. This is Poseidon. Poseidon, this is everyone. What happened to Zeus? Well, Poseidon is Echidna's grandfather and... Echidna, get down here now! We don't usually allow her to belch, or levitate above the room, or get possessed as she seems to be. I won't tolerate another moment of this nonsense. Echidna, it's time to go home! Well, what are you going to do? What can I do? She won't listen! The B5 Feely Gook Gleepy Glaucoma Violet be backy now Nightmare be over! Duck! She's gonna blow! Zeus? Is that you? No! I know it's not Carl Sweathers. No, but good guess. Ah! Why are we screaming? Because he's scary. He's really scary. Enough! Ah! That was fun! Let's go home. I have a headache. Ah, well, he... Uh, why don't you take two aspirin and call me in the morning? Sure thing! <laughs> oh, terrible dream! Violet, let's go home. Can we keep him? How much? Uh, it's on the house. Really? You're nothing without celebrity teeth. Do you hear me? Nothing! I thought if I had fancy teeth, people would want to hear me sing. But after all this craziness, I wouldn't touch those things. I think you have a splendid voice, Shaky. That means the world to me coming from you, Saltina. Uh, may I escort you home? Why, thank you. I would like that very much. Wait, what about the teeth? You're nothing without celebrity teeth. Do you hear me? Nothing! Don't be silly. I was never here for the teeth. I was here for the free food. Cheers! And I think I've learned something tonight. If none of these important rich people need these teeth to make them feel rich and important, then by golly, neither do I! Wait, what about the teeth? You're nothing without celebrity teeth. Do you hear me? Nothing! Ah, Himeki! I couldn't have hoped for a better ending. Now you will finally be complete. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Himeki? I'm gonna run for mayor! Nathan Jr., you have done it this time. Do you hear me? You have done it. This is it for you, buddy. The last straw. This time, you're definitely going away to the Young Gums Academy. Do you hear me? I should have sent you years ago. <laughs> All I ever wanted to do was be a magician. Now I failed at that, too. Now, now, Nathan, it's partially my fault. You see, I saw promise in you, and I wanted to challenge your skills. So I intervened a bit here and there, stuck my nose where it didn't belong. You did the best you could under the circumstances. Even with your help, I couldn't fix anything. I'm a failure. I know of one thing you did all by yourself that was a complete and total success. A real testimony to your skill as a sorcerer. What? The poison apple. 
It worked just like you wanted it to, and Strange Blood didn't help you with it at all. Hey, that's true. Nathan, how would you like to study with me? You could be my apprentice. I'll teach you everything I know about magic. What about my parents? I have a feeling they will agree. <laughs> Bye, Nathan. Good luck with the magic. Goodbye, strange blood. You're neither strange nor blood. Discuss amongst yourselves. It's all back in place. You know, when I took that job as a traveling salesman, I had no idea just how far I'd be traveling. I guess it doesn't matter much where I go. There's always going to be a fantastic adventure. So, let me ask you something. How did you make that poison apple? In due time, strange blood. In due time. <laughs> <laughs>